Hi everyone, again, after uh, this first part of the lecture, we are going to jump into the second part of this lecture. So after seeing all the different blood vessels, uh, the arteries and the veins and the arterioles, we are going to look at uh, very important concepts that are going to determine the blood flow, uh, which are the vessel pressure and the vessel resistance. And these uh, two concepts are really important because they are going to determine the blood flow And also, it's going to determine the exchange rate at the capillary. Okay. So, in normal circumstances, the blood flow is determined by the cardiac output. And as we have seen in the class before, the cardiac output is equal to the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. So if the cardiac output increases, the flow also increases. And if the cardiac output decreases, the flow also decreases. But uh, flow is also determined by, as we can see here, the pressure and the resistance and the flow is going to be equal to the difference in pressure divided by the resistance. So uh, here we have that the pressure and the resistance are really important to also regulate uh, the flow, uh, the blood flow, and therefore the exchange rate and the capillaries. So now we are going to look at the different concepts that are going to determine the resistance and therefore are going to determine the blood flow. So the resistance is really important and resistance is going to be equal to H multiplied by nu, which is the viscosity of the fluid. So in this case, it's the viscosity of the blood. And this is multiplied by the length of the blood vessel. And this is going to be divided by pi multiplied by the radius R squared to the fourth. So this is very important in blood vessels uh, because the blood vessel length and the blood vessel diameter are going to determine the resistance and therefore they are going to determine the blood flow. So in first place we have the length. Okay. So here if we have a short blood vessel and the whole area of the of the cross section or of the of the vessel is going to be for example like equal 1 the resistance is going to be also equal 1 therefore the uh, flow is also going to be 1 so just for an easy example but if we increase the area by 2 and the area is equal to 2, the resistance is also going to increase proportionally. It's going to be equal to 2. And the flow, because of this um, relationship here with the, res with the resistance, is going to be half of it. Okay. And so therefore, as we increase the length, we increase the friction and we increase the resistance and therefore we decrease the flow. Okay. We have another, as uh, we talked, uh, so we have the length and we have defined uh, what's the, um, uh, like the result of the vessel length on the resistance and for the flow, but also it's very important the diameter of the blood vessel. So if we have a big vessel like this one, and we have that the diameter is equal to 
and then there for the radius is equal one the resistance the change in the resistance is going to be one and uh, this happens because most of the resistance uh, all, all the friction that is generated uh, while when the um, uh, blood goes through a vessel happens here on the on on the uh, borders of the vessel so if uh, the uh, vessel is bigger uh, we are going to have like some of the blood is going to find resistance here and here but most of the blood is going to find no resistance at the center of the depth of the vessel. But if the vessel diameter, if the diameter of the lumen is really a small, all the blood is going to be in contact with uh, here the borders of the vessel, and that's therefore going to increase the friction and going to increase the resistance. And this happens because of this relationship here. So if the diameter is equal one and the radius of four is equal half of it this is going to increase the resistance by 16 according to uh, this formula here so this is a huge increase in resistance that is going to have a really important uh, impact uh, reducing uh, the flow so this is uh, important in the day-to-day -day basis, but it's really important uh, specifically in uh, certain pathologies, for example, atherosclerosis. So in, uh, for example, in atherosclerosis, we can develop different plagues. So for example, if uh, we come here to our lone vessel and we have this atherosclerosis plate, uh, plague, this is going to have uh, different effects. So first of all, it's going to decrease the diameter, and therefore, it's going to increase our resistance. But also, so uh, here in the normal uh, blood vessel, uh, the blood is going to uh, circulate uh, in a laminar flow. But when we have a plague, uh, for example, in, a, in atherosclerosis, this laminar flow will be affected, and then we are going to have a turbulent flow and then this turbulent flow is also going to have an impact on the resistance and also uh, the flow of the blood because this turbulence is going to increase the pressure therefore it's going to decrease the flow, the flow rate and to compensate this flow rate as we can see here in this relationship the cardiac output is going to increase and the work of our heart is going to be higher okay so we have looked at the different concepts of uh, vessel length and the diameter and how they affect the resistance and the flow next uh, we are going to look at the different parameters that uh, control the edge change um, the edge change of gases and nutrients at the capillary beds uh, be right back <laughs>